So what if we were told that B is 11, C is 15, and angle A is 100 degrees? Okay, we could not set up the law of sines with those three pieces of information because with the law of sines, you have to have at least one angle and its opposite side. We don't have any of that here, okay? And we can't figure anything else out the way that it stands. Or if we were told the measure of all these sides, you gotta have at least one angle for the law of sines to work. So the um, fix for that problem is the law of cosines. Now I could go through the proof I showed you uh, the proof for the law of sines. I showed you where it came from. Breaking down that triangle, those two right triangles, setting up those ratios. Um, the law of cosines starts with the Pythagorean theorem, which you should be able to see looking at the formula right here. A squared equals B squared plus C squared. That's the beginning of the Pythagorean theorem, okay? But it's not right triangle, so we add this extra piece to it. Uh, I'm not going to go through where that extra piece comes from. But just know that this is what it is, okay? Um, so depending on what information we're given, just like with the law of signs, that there were different uh, versions, okay? Technically, there are three versions of the law of cosines. Now, there's nothing different about them except the order of the variables, okay? The only thing different is the order of the variables. So you'll notice it always starts with that in here. And then you do minus two times whatever two sides were on the right side of the equation times the cosine of the angle that was on the left side of the equation. Okay, so a squared equals b squared plus c squared minus two bc cosine of a. If you put b squared on the left side, then it would be b squared equals a squared plus c squared minus two ac cosine of b. And then you've got your third version is C on the left side. So the angle is angle C, and you're subtracting two times AB. Okay? So it's not really that you have to memorize three different versions of this. Okay? You just have to be able to move the pieces, so to speak, based on what variables you're given. Okay? Questions about the form? And this is all multiplication. After this subtraction sign, all of these terms are being multiplied by each other. So this is one big term right here. 2bc cosine of a, that's one term. It's stuck together. Um, so I'll point it out when we get to it, but a lot of times uh, people will mess up. They want to do this part. They want to do b squared plus c squared minus 2bc. They'll crunch all that together and then multiply by the cosine of a. Can't do that. It's 2bc times the cosine of a. That is being subtracted from the b squared plus c squared. Okay, so let's look at an example. Okay, we're going to solve scaling triangles using the law of cosines, but the good news is we only have to use the law of cosines once. Once we use the law of cosines to find a missing piece, then we have enough information that all we have to use is the law of sines. Okay, um, so law of sines, typically we had to do it twice. Uh, law of cosines, it's longer, but you only have to do that once, then you can use the law of sines. Okay, so here's our first triangle. We are told that side B is 9 meters, side C is 12 meters, and angle A is 25 degrees. And I did not rearrange my picture here, which I should have. Because this is not right. Let's see here. C would be the biggest one. Okay, so I just rearranged my picture because of B is smaller, um, C is probably going to be the biggest side, and A is a small angle, so I need to rearrange a little bit. Okay, so let's label and then we will do the law of cosines. So this is 9 meters, C is 12 meters, angle A is 25 degrees. Okay, so angle A is the included angle between those two sides. That means we're going to use the law of cosines. So let's set that up. I'm going to write it in general form first. And 
uh, then we'll plug in these specifics. Okay, so since we are given angle A, we're going to use the form A squared equals B squared plus C squared minus 2BC cosine of A. All right, let's plug in what we know. We do not know side A, so that remains a variable. Side B is 9. Side C is 12. Plug in 9 and 12 again, and then the cosine of 25 degrees. My suggestion to you, when you fill in everything on the left side, just type that in all at once. Don't try and piece it together. Just type in the whole thing. Again, make sure your calculator is in degree mode in case it has been reset. You will not get the correct answer if it's not. Okay, and like I said, just type in everything on the left side there. We get 29.238. Is that our final answer? No, we've got to take the square root. Okay, we do have to take the square root. So just do the square root of the answer. So we get A is approximately 5.407 meters. Okay, now, um, one thing that should have tipped you off that you were not finished is that A is a 25 degree angle, and if you had not taken the square root, the side A would have been bigger than side C, which is 12. So that doesn't really make much sense um, in this context. Since the other two sides are 9 and 12, there's probably not going to be that much of a gap in the length of side A. Okay, so <clears throat> we have one more piece of information here. We still need to find angles B and C. Um, <clears throat> so you could do the law of cosines again, but it's really more of a hassle. So it's easier to just do the law of sines. So now we can do the law of sines with angle A and side A. And when you do the law of sines, you need to find the uh, smallest remaining angle, okay? Find the smallest remaining angle. So in this case, that would be angle B because side B is smaller than side B. So begin with that. Um, <clears throat> so B is equal to the inverse sine of 9 sine of 25 degrees over 5.407. If at all possible, hopefully you kept the 5.407 there so that you can just use the answer. Remember, it's better to not round if at all possible. A lot of times it's not going to make a huge difference, but I think it's a good habit to be in. So angle B is approximately 44.703 degrees. And then all we have to do is subtract from 180 to find angle C, 110.297 degrees, and of course it is a good idea just to do that last check, make sure smallest angle is across from the smallest side, biggest angle is across from the biggest side, middle angle, middle side, okay, and we are good in those regards. Do you always want a uh, warning around the uh, value? Yes, I would like for you to, unless I put in the direction something different, then let's just be in the habit of doing three numbers after it doesn't work. And that's just because of, that's the standard on the AP calculus exam. So I'm just going to tell you now. Even if you're not taking it, it's still going to be. All right, so um, right here in this note somewhere, I guess after this example, you have to find two angles that are triangles and you have to find the angle across from the smaller side. If you do not, um, then you run into the potential of uh, finding one of those triangles that's not possible. So it's, it's really better to always start by finding the angle across from the smaller side. It's just a good habit to you. So always finding the side of a triangle using the law of cosines. Let's look at an example where we have to find an angle and where we are given all three sides and we need to find an angle.
So in this example, we are given all three sides. We are told that side A is 8 feet, side B is 19 feet, and side C is 14 feet. Okay? A is 8 feet, C is 14 feet, and B is 19 feet. So on this one, we are going to, uh, similar to the last problem, we are going to find, oops, wait a second, find the angle opposite the longest side, okay? We want to find the angle opposite of the longest side, so we're going to find angle B first. Okay, we're going to find angle B first. Um, start with biggest angle. Yeah. So we're going to use the form B squared equals A squared plus C squared minus 2AC cosine of B. Alright, so we have 19 squared is equal to 8 squared plus 14 squared minus 2 times 8 times 14 times the cosine of B. Now this time we can't just type everything in. We kind of got to chunk it up in pieces. So we are going to <clears throat> crunch the numbers that I just underlined. Okay, we're going to square the 8 and square the 14 and add them together. And we're also going to square the 19. So I got that part too. Okay, so we have 361 is equal to 260 minus 16 times 14, 2 times 8 times 14. Okay, 224 cosine of B. Now, here's where a lot of people mess up. They want to do 260 minus 224. You can do that. Okay, 224 has the variable attached to it. So we have to begin by subtracting the 260. So we get 101 is equal to negative 224 cosine of B. Divide both sides by negative 224. And we're solving for an angle. So what do we have to do? The inverse cosine of Negative, negative 101 over 224 is our angle B. So that's what we're going to type in. So we get 116.8 degrees approximately for angle B. which is what we're expecting, because that's the biggest side, so it should be the biggest angle. Now we can use the law of sines, and we want to go next to the smallest angle. Okay, so sine of 116.8 degrees over 19 is equal to, we're going to find angle A, because it's across from the next smallest side, or actually the smallest side. So... The inverse sine of 8 sine of the answer we just got over 19. A is approximately 22.075. And then we just need to subtract those two from 180 to get our third angle. 41.125. And a quick check. We'll confirm smallest side, smallest angle, biggest side, biggest angle. We're good. Okay? So, <clears throat> when you're finding two angles, okay, you start by finding the smallest angle. Um, if